Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek, keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mike Ichi, and it's Monday, April 11th. This week's Quick Charge is sponsored by Recurrent. More information during the break. Tesla is ramping up hiring for the Optimus Robot Project, also known as the Tesla Bot. The project went from a side project for the company into a top priority in a very short period of time. Last week, Musk said that Tesla is aiming to start production in 2023. Now there are several really interesting positions related to the software behind the robot posted online. Tesla has a job listing called Motion Planning and Navigation Tesla Bot. They say that the role is going to participate in the development of an overall humanoid software architecture. They also have other listings such as Deep Learning Engineer or Scientist, Electrical Engineer, and Controls Engineer. Tesla has briefly demonstrated the Cybertruck's rear wheel steering in a very short video. Rear wheel steering is quickly becoming a must-have feature for electric pickups. GMC started the craze by demonstrating the crab mode, utilizing the rear wheel steering on the Hummer EV. The feature has been put to good use, showing that the big truck can turn diagonally in what appears to be superhuman feats of a super truck, at least in the demonstration. In the Cybertruck, it's a little less noticeable. Tesla was spotted playing with the feature on the Cybertruck that they brought to the Gigafactory, Texas, for the Cyber Rodeo. The video shows that the rear wheel barely starts to slide as the car makes a very slow turn indoors. Of course, this wasn't meant to be a real showcase of the feature, only a snapshot of what could be to come. Then again, even a slight turn of 10 degrees can have a big impact on maneuvering. Tesla has managed to deliver over 65,000 vehicles produced at Gigafactory Shanghai in March, an impressive output representing 100% year-over-year growth. This is a 16% month-to-month increase compared to February, which had 56,515. But it's actually quite impressive compared to the same period last year when Shanghai had half the output. This is actually really good news, noting that the factory did have to shut down for two days in March, from the COVID-19 lockdowns in the whole city. We can only hope that the current quarter shows good numbers, given that the shutdown has lasted well over two days in the month of April. This week's Quick Charge is sponsored by Recurrent, battery reports for EV owners. With Recurrent, you can check the battery before buying a used EV, monitor your battery performance over your entire ownership with monthly insights, then command higher resale values with a battery condition report when it's time to trade in. Recurrent gives people confidence in EV batteries, whether they are a first-time buyer or a long-time EV owner. While a legacy combustion engine has 2,000 parts, an electric motor has two dozen. The most important and expensive part of an EV is the battery, and it's literally a black box. Recurrent makes battery performance and expected range over time more transparent. Reports are free for individual owners, and Recurrent also has paid options available for car dealers to run bulk reports. To get started, visit RecurrentAuto.com. That's RecurrentAuto.com. Elon Musk announced that Tesla might actually have to get into the lithium mining and refining business due to the price levels going insane. Tesla's need for lithium supply is increasing fast as the company is expanding with production in Gigafactory, Texas and Berlin. At the same time, the increased price of shipping and gasoline for supply lines have drawn up the price of everything further down the production line. Lithium has risen sharply, as noted by Musk. What's peculiar about the comment is that Tesla already announced that they were going into the lithium business two years ago. At Tesla's Battery Day event in 2020, the automaker announced that they started buying lithium claims on 10,000 acres in Nevada. Since then, not much has happened, at least facing the public. They did file for a patent on a new process for extracting lithium just last year. With the price squeeze coming a bit early, Musk seems to be motivated to tackle this new industry. Elon Musk has changed his mind and decided to walk away from his recently accepted seat on the board of Twitter. On Monday, an SEC filing revealed that Musk had been buying shares of Twitter and that his investment surpassed $3 billion, or 9% of the total company. A day after revealing his stake in the company, Musk accepted an offer from Twitter's board and management to join its board of directors. It came with a stipulation that he may not own more than 14.9% of the company in order to avoid a hostile takeover. Well, a few days later, he changed his mind. 
In an email to Twitter employees, the CEO, Parag Agrawal, said in part, quote, Elon's appointment to the board was to become officially effective April 9th, but Elon shared that the same morning he will no longer be joining the board. The CEO went on to warn the employees of distractions ahead, telling them to tune out the noise. He might be preparing employees for the news that Musk has left the board and is now free to buy as much stock as he wants, including enough to start throwing his weight around. In today's community comment, a channel named TeslaBot says, Nissan plans to fail. Shocking. Well, you know what, TeslaBot, I wouldn't go that far. There's a lot of companies who have put their claim on a solid-state battery coming out in just a few years, even some big-name auto. They might not be spending a whole lot of money on it, but they just want to get in the news. Although they did announce that they're building a factory, so maybe they are putting a bunch of money into it. I don't know. I sincerely hope that Nissan can pull it around. I've been a big fan of them since the Nissan Leaf, but that goodwill ran dry a long time ago. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.